have you checked the children? Oh, oh, hi, I'm Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I mean, Fuego here. Here to review another recently released horror movie. And this one is, believe it or not, for the silliness and B-movie-esque-ness that this movie has, actually has some relative cultural significance. Only in so far as the fact that this is the closest thing that we have gotten in the recent memory to a five nights at freddy's movie this a lot of people have been saying <laughs> i know a lot of people have been saying that this is nick cage versus five nights at freddy's and yes it is yes it isn't we're talking about willie's wonderland you guys and this movie is a few different things and none of these things all at the same time uh we are going to get into it but starting with our overall thoughts I will say that this movie was entertaining at both the least and the most. Um, it is entertaining, but it is never anything more than entertaining. I would not consider it good, but I would consider it entertaining. So um, there's a lot that goes into that, which we'll unpack throughout the review, but I suppose that is the most overall opinion that I could possibly uh, generate. Fuego? Yeah, I said something similar in our group thread that, that we have. Oh, I now, was like, I'm, ch now <laughs> I'm aping him. Okay. <laughs> no, but I think I used the word it was like dumb enough, stupid enough for me to have fun with because it, it, it really does not try to be anything beyond the concept that you see in the trailer and uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I didn't love it, that's, uh, that's for sure. But it was just dumb enough to be fun. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. I don't know that I would say that. It wasn't, it, it was dumb, but it wasn't dumb enough to be fun. It was dumb enough to be fun at parts. At parts is a better assessment. Definitely not throughout the whole thing. So, uh, the getting into the story of it all, the story is about this, this uh, mute... Str well, not mute. Seemingly. But dialogueless stranger. Yeah. He's he's mute up until he's playing pinball. Then you'll hear him, uh, well, or fighting. Then you'll hear him do grunts and stuff like that. Oh, those fights. Um, but yeah. he never actually mm -hmm. speaks a word of dialogue. So it's about a mute stranger that is stranded in this particular town after getting all of his tires flattened by a stray set of spikes that have been laid down in the highway. It looks so just d deliberate. Oh, oh yeah, distinctively yeah. Distinctively done. No, uh, not at all. Not something that could have been foreseen a million miles away. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, this he is stuck in this town and said that uh, if you go and work at this place and do janitor duty and clean up this place tonight, we will deliver your fixed hot rod of a vehicle tomorrow morning your muscle car tomorrow morning ready for you to blow this pop stand mm -hmm. and so he goes to this place called willie's wonderland and it's a place that's been closed for a number of years he doesn't know the ins and outs of why but he goes and he starts to clean the place overnight because he wants to get his car and get out of town very vigilantly too he's doing a hell of a job he <laughs> is he is he's trying to clean and actually make an impact and 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 doing a good job. Uh, meanwhile, there is a group of teenage kids that have gathered in order to try and literally burn down this establishment. At first, we don't know why, although obviously we're watching this movie, so we know why. But nonetheless, we find out that there are eight animatronics within this particular uh, pizzeria, you know, very much like Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz Pistol Pizza, Pete's. Pistol Pete's Pizza, yeah. animatronics singing <clears throat> songs, but these animatronics are actually bloodthirsty and want to kill. So it's Nick Cage and these random teenagers versus eight different animatronics. That's what the crux of this movie is. That's all you need to say about the story without getting into spoilers, quite frankly. And that, to me, was enough. Was it enough to make it one of my standouts of the year? No. Was it enough to make it more than just a silly B-movie offering? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is my overall thoughts, I would say. Fuego, what about you? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the, like, hit some of it. I think Cage was not as cagey as I was expecting. He was in this very, you know, quieted, as Cecil said, subdue sort of role. He's voguing like, on, the, yeah. on, the, on the pinball machine. But. Yeah, and, which was maybe my favorite scene with him, aside from where he's tearing through, like, you know, creatures and getting covered in black. The ape in the bathroom oil was, was one of the best ones. Whatever. That, that might have been the favorite fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I... Eh, once again, I definitely, I, I definitely, did, yeah, I, I definitely didn't love it because of the fact that every one of these teenagers is as troped and terrible as you would imagine. Uh, the enigma that is Cage's character, sure, it adds, adds a little bit more, but um, hey, I, I will still contend that I had fun. So yeah, okay, that's where I'm fair at. enough. I got my hair in my mouth. Sorry. So I mean, that's the overall story. As as we we touched on it briefly, let's talk about the actual acting. Fuego, what are your thoughts on the acting? Once again, Cage uh, just trying to be as much like body language and mannerisms and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we've got our horny teenage couple we've got our uh you know guy who was like plighting for the girl who kind of becomes our our, our final girl i, I, I Dude, mean she's never every... gonna fuck you <laughs> yeah yeah some of the dialogue was it, it was very like what 2007 uh, mm. uh friday remake or whatever i mean just 2009, just uh, but 2009 i was trying to remember man i'm not the biggest uh, you know jason fan but yeah it was that sort of I guess maybe people will contend it's self-aware. That's why it's writing itself like this. And I'm like, really? Because I've seen self-aware written a whole lot more just funny and in a clever fashion. Mostly Williamson, but there's other peeps who have done it pretty good. This one does not hit those heights at all. It is really... A, a, even the acting, I, I mean, was it people in these animatronic suits? Because I know we had some. some it was from a, certain, from a production standpoint, but it was but, not supposed to be in yeah. reality. They were supposed uh, to be okay. actual animatronics. Oh, okay. So, well, well, yeah. From the, it's not people in these. It's well, it was, but you know, kind of in the soul. Well, like specifically one, the, the ballerina one was, was the movement was that. a human that just had a big plaster head on yeah. their shoulders. So. Some of the animatronics, a lot more effort was put into them than some of the others. Like, that's, I think, personally, part of the weakness of the movie. There's yes. eight animatronics, but some of them just felt like developed just to be cannon fodder or mm -hmm. to create cannon fodder. Mm -hmm. And it didn't necessarily further the overall story, uh, which was a big problem. Like, that's the thing. Someone, uh, being someone that's aware of the Five Nights at Freddy's universe and story, knowing how not. deep it actually goes, I know how cool this sort of scenario could be. But if you don't know anything beyond the surface level, this is the kind of movie that you're going to get. Mm. And this is the better version of it, right? Because we had the Banana Splits. I was going to mention that. That, that, yeah. was, that was okay. The gore in the Banana Splits was, was surprisingly, better surprisingly pretty good. than I think the gore in this one was. Mm. But the story was better in this one. I yeah. think the origin of the animatronics in this one was much more straightforward and and pretty cool honestly it was, it's a it's basically a group of satanists that like Charles Lee Ray have been cornered and are going to die and so they end up transferring their souls into these animatronics spoiler i guess whatever don't really care and even before that there was the fact that uh they were covering up kills of like children and stuff like that before they were about to be and the the, the town is essentially there's one of those Stereotypical agreements between an evil force and it's an, an, we'll a town. You. Yeah, yeah, we we've seen something like this various times, but uh, I I thought that aspect of the story because I know we've kind of jumped around with story and acting and whatnot, but I thought that aspect of the story since we didn't address it, dude, I I thought it worked pretty good for the explanation aspect and uh, yeah, I mean, still the animatronics, the fact that some as we segued from acting to that, some were straight up animals and then there were other like more humanoid ones like you mentioned i thought the hispanic one who's like speaking spanish that's so hey, dumb the turtle some may, yeah yeah some may <sighs> may make me think the bad taste aspect in that regard and even this fuego man i i mean i don't know i i chose dumb fuego it was dumb don't fall for it but I, I i said dumb enough to find amusing in some points uh but uh yeah yeah i don't know yeah wasn't great. <laughs> so specifically talking about the acting, I gotta say that Nick Cage is the only one that I was pretty much okay with. Everyone mm -hmm. else was just so weak. 
you know like the teenage characters were annoying the townsfolk that were covering up or whatever were annoying oh yeah the sheriff lady who i know i've seen in a ton of different things oh yeah yeah she's she's been in a lot of stuff uh and then not only that but um the the dude that you know helps him out the the head of the mechanic shop mm -hmm. just so silly and stupid like just no no great depth or necessity to be on screen even i don't know i and just the owner of the guy who has the property now he's only like ticks or something yeah, like that yeah like, uh, <laughs> i just all that stuff was just so yeah. stupid it, it just all it was 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 dragging the the main idea down but they needed them in there in order to they push did. The plot forward. I just I didn't like them. I didn't like them. I, I didn't like them as actors. But once we found out a little additional aspects to the story and just that conspiracy amongst the town people, I was a little more okay with them in hindsight. Although I don't forgive the acting. I thought they were written as, I I mean enough as they needed to be. Fair so. enough. So, so I mean set yeah. set design. I mean the fact that it's just. I mean, we set spent design much, was okay. I mean, all was, of our time. I thought it looked good, though. It was I like mean, a pizzeria, you know, yeah. with uh, animatronic. It was a Chuck E. Cheese, essentially, a showbiz pizza, a Pistol Pete's pizza, mm -hmm. uh, that had animatronics and party tables that were just left unattended when everyone, I guess, filed out of the building when something crazy was going on, but no one ever wrote an article about it in the newspaper or anything like that. So it was just always a transformation for yeah. me of the fact that it was dark and dank and dirty and just. I mean that that had to have been some effort for you know just just the team that was doing set design and you know getting a pristine looking place that we get at some point without spoiling you know with just the dank nasty layer that that it really was. It's all but, gonna get bloodied up yeah. pretty rapidly. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, anything else really? Because we I have mean the covered... animatronics we got to talk about yeah. again. I think that. Some of the animatronics were definitely worthwhile. Some of the anim animatronics were absolutely not. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Willie the Weasel, I thought, was a good one. I thought the ape yeah. was a good one, and Which especially one what happened fights. with the ape. <laughs> yeah, the fight with the ape was good. But when you started to get into the humanoid animatronics um, that didn't have the elongated weasel head, when you got to the frog and the ballerina... Um, the humanness came through too much. They did not mm -hmm. feel like animatronics, especially the ballerina that was literally a female body with a big plaster head on her shoulders. So she would move like a robot, but it's like, that's just a lady moving like a robot. That's not an animatronic. Like, Five Nights at Freddy's is going to be good because all of the animatronics are going to look damn well like animatronics that are unnatural when they come at you. Yeah. This was just a lady in a giant you know mask you know uh call it um uh, what's the thing in new orleans oh i'm um, uh, mardi gras yeah call perhaps. it a giant I mean, mardi gras like mask mardi you know what i mean mask? just a big fat <laughs> head but otherwise she moves like a human moving like a robot and it's like it pulls me directly out of it so some of the animatronics were good but most of them were just cheesy garbage like it yeah. didn't it didn't justify the film the price for this is $20 to rent. If this was $20 to own and go back to, okay. But $20 to rent, I'm going to be much happier giving my full opinion and honest opinion on this than not. Because fuck $20 to rent this thing. It's almost, uh, I mean, it's almost cheaper if you go to see it in a theater because it's a theatrical at home where it's on that premium VOD and then it's still... It's still in some Harkins theaters right now, man. It was released there and at an AMC or two. Uh, if you go on some cheapy matinee, they're still trying to get people in there. Uh, if you're in a state where they actually allow it. And I've seen six ninety nine, eight dollars $8. I thought about after the fact. Well, yeah, it was after the fact. Because when you were like, yeah, let's split it and just you know rent it. Because we didn't get any early screener potential or whatever. Uh yeah, yeah. I I would have been more happy maybe with even seeing it in a theater and spending like eight bucks just like you would have uh, at, at a matinee to enjoy it like that. But music, I have to say, there are a number of bits in this, whether it's the pinball bit, and you all know what the pinball bit is, where, you know, 
Nick Cage is just like dancing around, still not really doing anything, but uh, as far as singing or talking, but he's mouthing. Is that everything. the new wave one where it's like Willie's mm-hmm. Wonderland? Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. And then you have the older, more like you know, oh, it's the it's, it's your the family-centric. Yeah. and we want you to have fun. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So I. I mean, well-crafted in that regard, and I know the director was trying to make this movie for, like, three or four years from what I was reading on THR, so, and I, I mean, props for getting something done that's, it's not terrible, man. It's, it was, I still contend, despite its problems, enjoyable, so. Debatable, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to know your guys' opinion in the comments down below. Uh, one of the things I have to talk about before we go is the directing. I did not like the directing in this movie at all. I thought it was very confusing, I thought when the fighting was happening, the, the shot progression didn't make sense. It was a little too close up sometimes. Too close up, too yeah. choppy, not good. I, I feel like the directing was actually a shortcoming in this one. You know, yeah. uh, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm just trying to give my honest opinion. Uh, the, the actual animatronics and how things played out was way more interesting than how the story was actually told, which if you have those two things in line, then you make a hell of a movie, but... If one is at the odds with the other one, then you have a problem. And I think that was the case here. I think that was the case. Yeah, it kind of veers off some of the just momentum for those other aspects of a film when others start to, you know, tone it down, regrettably. But I still think it wasn't as bad, maybe, as a lot of other people. And I do. (laughs) So There you go. (laughs) Why don't you guys let us know in the comments down below, what is your thoughts, or what are your thoughts on Willy's Wonderland if you watched it, let us know in the comments. If you have not seen it, let us know in the comments if you're more or less likely to do so after watching this. If you've made it this far, I'd be curious to know y'all's opinion. But Same. <laughs> until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel. But I have been Cecil Laird. And gracias, Jaime and Fuego. And remember, stay scared.